Hi, my name is Michael Roth, and this is Life of Worship, where we go beyond the music, we go beyond the words that we sing every Sunday, and we really dive into what a life before Jesus, a life before our God looks like, uh, that is fully laid down, that is fully surrendered to him. Um, over the next few weeks, I'm going to be talking about who God is, and I'm really excited to do this because every time I just kind of dive into who God is, he gives me a different angle. He gives me something more. He gives me more of a revelation. And so my prayer as I go through this series um, is that you do the same, that you don't just, well, God's this and God's that, and that's how I've known him. And so, I mean, because if you think about it, um, I've been married to my wife for six years, and the more I get to know her, um, or the more I talk to her, the more I get to know her, the more I find out more about her, and, and the more I fall in love with her because she is, she is a very awesome woman, and she loves the Lord, and she raises our kids well, and she, does, she works at her job. Well, you know what I mean? There's just so many things that she does so well, and the more I get to know her, I, just, I see her in a different way, in a different light, and my love for her grows deeper. And so in the same way as we're going through this, um, even if you've heard of God in these ways, I just pray that he gives you a greater revelation of who he is um, because I, I think there is just the depths of who he is. That's what we're going to be doing for all of eternity. And it is an amazing thing that we get to start right now to dive into who he is. So over the next few weeks, I'll be going over who God is, who he has revealed himself to be in the scriptures. But before I do that, I want to ask you a question. Who is God to you? Is he someone that is distant? Is he someone who is involved with your life? Is he your God? We have to know who our God is for ourselves. And every person who has ever lived has had to have that moment. The patriarchs in the Bible, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all needed to have this revelation too. And I'm going to focus in on Jacob because as you read through the story of Jacob's life, you realize that God was not Jacob's God until Jacob you know, had to get rid of some of the stuff that he had built up over his heart, uh, get rid of some of the thoughts that he had had. Um, and then he was able to break through and God was able to break through to his heart and give him a revelation that God loved him, that God wanted to prosper him, that God wanted him to be one of the patriarchs of the Jewish nation of Israel. It is just absolutely amazing. And Israel is actually named after Jacob. Um, and so God became real to him, but it wasn't until then um, that God became real to Jacob that Jacob said that um, this is my God. And so when Jacob was at Bethel, this was one of the first encounters that he had with the Lord. The Lord gave him a dream of a ladder, and Jacob was laying down on a rock. He was literally using a rock as a pillow, and he was just awakened to this dream. And the heavens were open, and there was a ladder, and angels were going up and down and up and down the ladder. And at the very top of the ladder was God. And the Lord spoke to him from the top of the ladder. And I'm in Genesis uh, 28, 13, and then I'm going to skip ahead to verses 20 through 22. But it, the Lord speaks to Jacob at the top of the ladder, and it says, Behold, the Lord stood above the ladder and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham your father and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give it to you and your descendants. Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God be with me, and keep me in this way that I'm going, and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I can come back to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house, and all of it that you give me I will surely give to you. So the Lord introduces himself as the father of Jacob's grandfather and as the God of Jacob's father. So Abraham was his grandfather and Isaac was his father. God did not say, and the God of you. And Jacob, even in that moment, said, yeah, then the Lord will be my God if he does all these things for me. Because you see, Jacob wasn't trustworthy. Up to this point, he had lied, he had cheated, he had manipulated, he had just done all these different things, um, and he's going to continue to do those things. <laughs> but he wasn't trustworthy, and he didn't know if he could trust God. And usually a hang-up we all have is if we struggle with something, sometimes we project it onto God. Um, or that struggle, it can affect our relationship with God. 
Um, Jacob lied, deceived, and manipulated to get what he wanted. So he did the same to God. He said, if you do this, then you will be my God. He didn't know God was wanting to bless him. Jacob didn't know that all he had to do was just ask. Jacob had to change his perception of God. Um, a couple chapters later, Jacob runs into his brother Esau. And so if you don't know the story, Jacob deceived his brother Esau, took away uh, his brother Esau's inheritance. And so Esau was really, really mad. Esau was furious with him. And so that's why Jacob was running away in the first place. Um, and so when Jacob was coming back, he heard that his brother Esau was coming to meet him. And Jacob turns to God. Then Jacob says in Genesis 32, 9 through 10, he says, Then Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac. Realize he still isn't saying, and God of me. He still hasn't said that. The Lord who said to me, return to your country and your family, and I will deal well with you. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and all the truths which you have shown your servant. For I crossed over this Jordan with my staff, and now I have become two companies. So in desperation, Jacob turns to God and humbles himself for the first time in his life. Notice Jacob still doesn't call God his God but we see the first step in God becoming Jacob's God. Then later in chapter 32, Jacob wrestles with God, not letting go of God till he blesses him. God has changed Jacob's name to Israel. And all that time, Jacob was trying to find other ways to, to be blessed. All right, And God was still blessing him, but he was like manipulating. He was manipulating his uncle Laban. And if you want to read more about that story, it's, it's kind of an interesting story of how he would like um, have, the, have the different lambs, you know, lay, you know, um, breed in a certain way so that he would have the stronger ones. And anyway, I'm not explaining it very well, but if you go and read the story, it's very interesting because the Lord still blessed Jacob because that was what the Lord wanted to do. But Jacob was doing it in his own power and in his own might. And so when he had the opportunity to humble himself before the Lord, then he wrestled with God and realized, I cannot, I cannot do this on my own. I'm too tired. I'm too worn out. I'm too afraid. And he said, I need God. And so he wrestled with God and he said, I will not let go of you until you bless me. And then God, what did God do? Well, God touched his hip and dislocated his hip. So Jacob walked around with a, with a limp for the rest of his life. But God saw the, the determination in Jacob's eyes and saw the determination in Jacob's heart. And, and even in his physicality, because he was wrestling with God and he would not let him go. Even when he, his hip was dislocated, he held on with such a tenacity that God was like, all right, I will bless you. And so God is finally becoming Jacob's God. And so God changes his name to Israel and, and gives Jacob favor with his brother Esau. So Esau was coming. But because Esau was coming to hurt Jacob, he didn't want to uh, just come and just say, hey, bro, we haven't seen each other for a while. Let's just hang out for a little bit and, you know, go and have some wings and watch some football. You know, he was like, no, I'm going to come and I'm going to kill him because he took everything from me. And, and Jacob knew that. And so instead of being cocky, he humbled himself before the Lord. And then he humbled himself before his brother. And the Lord gave Jacob favor. And so... God is finally becoming Jacob's God. Jacob encounters God for this second time. And the second time, he comes to him humbly, not saying, if you do this for me, then you'll be my God. Um, the second time when God visits him, he says, God, you are the only one who can bless me, and I'm not letting go of you until you bless me. And then if you fast forward a few generations, uh, God comes to Moses. And this, this is amazing to me. Because if you just think of how wicked Jacob was and how God did not give up on him. And after Jacob humbled himself, you know, he still made mistakes, but he humbled himself and he said, God, you are my God. And I know that only you can bless me. It is amazing what God, what God, how God introduces himself to Moses. And Moses is one of the greatest leaders in Israel's history. And God introduces himself as the God of your father, Moses, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. What a profound, profound thing. Because Jacob resisted God. He tried to manipulate God. He tried to do all these things. But then in the end, when he humbled himself and he came before God, and he said, God, you are my God. And then God was able to say, you, I'm the God of Jacob. 
And that, to me, just blows my mind. Because our God is personal. Our God is alive, and he wants to be our God. He wants to be in our lives. He wants to bless us. He wants to fill our lives with his presence. He wants to be each and every one of ours, our, our God. My prayer is that he is not just your pastor's God. My prayer is that he is not your parents' God or your grandparents' God or your sister's God or, or whoever you know that you, that you hear them talking about God all the time. But my prayer is that he becomes your God, that it be, he reveals himself to you as your God, that our eyes like Jacob will be open to him, that generations in the future will be able to say that he is the God of Micah. That when he introduces himself, he will say, I am the God of Micah. I am the God of fill in your name. So who is he to you? As we explore over the next few weeks who he has revealed himself as, I pray, um, I pray that your, your eyes would be open. And even before you hear my thoughts on who God is, I want to pray Ephesians 1, 17 through 19. If you just give me a second here, I'm going to pull it up. And I want to just pray this over you because I feel like I feel like the Lord is wanting to reveal Himself in a greater way to His church, and it is not just a it, it's not just a knowledge thing. It, it goes much much deeper, and it really goes to the heart of who our God is, and that He wants to have a relationship with us, and He wants to show you who He is, and so that our eyes will be open. And so Ephesians one seventeen through nineteen. I'm going to pray this over you, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your heart enlightened, having the eyes of your heart opened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of of the glorious inheritance of the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his great might. And my prayer is that if you don't already, that with confidence you will be able to say that he is my God. And he has shown himself to be mighty, that he has shown himself to be powerful, that he has shown himself to be ever-present, that he has shown himself in any way that you that, that as you cry out to him and as he reveals himself that he is more than enough for me and that's the cry of my heart and i'm praying that that is the cry of our hearts as we press forward together in this so i just want to thank you for joining me today um, i pray that the lord blesses your week and i look forward to seeing you next week as we dive into who god is